Hi, welcome back for another 8 Caillou Challenge. This is called All Star Code Challenge number 18. Create a function that accepts a string in a single character and returns an integer of, of the count of occurrences the second argument is found in the first one. If no occurrences can be found, a count of zero should be returned. So they have a few examples here. Consider the string hello and the, well, it's a character. It's supposed to be, remember, double quotes here denote strings, so this is technically a string, but in the challenge it'll be a character, so this is a typing accident here. And it returns one because there's one O in hello, right? And then if you do the same thing with the same input st string, you find that there's two L's. They told us to search for L this time, so we get a two. And then if you have an empty string, of course, you're not gonna find any characters in that, so um, for example, they give you Z, return zero. And that's kind of repeated right down here. They're just showing you the string count. Again, they spelled the method differently than they did here, another typo. Notes the first argument can be an empty string. And in languages with no distinct character data type, the second argument will be a string of length one. Okay, so languages are different. We do have characters in C sharp. We call them char, as you'll note right there. So go ahead and pause the video, give this one a try, and come on back when you're ready. All right, so I'm going to go through a few different solutions. This isn't going to take long, so I wanted to show you a bunch of different ways. We're going to use some basic building blocks first, and then I'll do some different kinds of solutions. I'll do one with something called link, that's L-I-N-Q, and another will use something called a rejects, which is a regular expression. But let's, let's start simple with the basics that you may already know. We're going to, one way to go about this, I'll just create a count variable, and I'll initialize it to zero. And then we're gonna loop over the input string, right? And we know that we have in C sharp a for loop. I'll show you a, a better way of doing this, but um, we're learning, so let's just start out with the very basics. So we initialize to zero, we go over um, less than the length, and we increment the index value each time. So what you can do is, is you can say if string i, right at position i in the string, is equal to the letter, then we know we can increment our count variable. With the idea being that when you're done looping through every character, you can simply return this count to get your answer. Now you'll notice I didn't put any curly braces in here, and that's fine for one line statements. This if block is, is sort of like a single unit. But if you like to format, you can certainly add those curly braces around. But just like with the if statement, right? If I only have one line to execute based on my if condition, then I don't need to include the curly braces around it. But you can put them around if you want. You'll see it kind of bloats your code a little bit, but it's a, it's a style choice. So let's do this. Make sure, okay, I did something wrong. Expected one, but was zero. Oh, wow, yeah, I see what I did. If string i equals zero, that's not what we wanted. We need to check if it equals the letter, right? Or this is the thing we're looking for, so let's make sure it matches that instead. Wow, that was bad. Okay, so good. Um, now we'll take this up just a, a tiny step here. Um, instead of doing it this way where when you don't actually need the index value, we have another option for a for loop. So let me show you that. It's called a for each loop. And it goes like this. You give the uh, variable type there, a name for it, and then in string. So each character, which I decided to call ch, you can name however you want. In is a keyword, the, the purple, you see how it puts keywords in purple and then string. So I'm asking for each character and string, and it's gonna feed them to me in the same order. It's just now I don't have that index value, that I value. So obviously this won't work, right? Because I is not defined. So how do you do this? Well, it's just, um, we decided to call it CH, right? So you'd say if CH equals letter, then you're doing the count, right? See the match there? So it's just the same thing, right? This is just another way of writing it. And I'll try to prove that to you by running this attempt. We should be all green. Good. Okay, so now um, 
This is probably enough if, if you're brand new to the language, but I do encourage you to stick with me. I'm gonna show you a couple more, a little more advanced ways for the eight Caillou series. Let's start with link. I'll say using system link, and then I'm going to delete all this. Okay, so now let me take you to um, link. Actually, I did rejects. Let's do rejects first since I'm already here. So you should know the Microsoft document page is here. Um, you can put that right into your search engine, C sharp Microsoft documents or something. You'll, you'll land here or put in rejects class C sharp and you'll, you'll get here. So rejects is, is a shortened form of regular expression. And you'll see, okay, represents an immutable regular expression. That doesn't help us so much, but it's kind of like pattern matching. I guess that's a really simplified way. We'll get into more rejects as you stay with me, regular expressions, but it's kind of like pattern matching. So what I wanna show you though, is that there is, if you expand its methods here, you'll notice there's one called matches. So I'll navigate there. Search is an input string for all occurrences of a regular expression and returns all of the matches. That sounds a lot like what we need, right? We wanna find some, um, even if you don't understand what a regular expression is yet, we're searching a str an input string for some occurrences, right? And returns all of the matches. So what if we searched our input string str for all occurrences of the letter, and then this thing would give us back a list of matches. And so all we'd need to do is count the number of matches, right? So let's find one that works for us. We have a string and a character, right? And if you look through these overloads, you'll notice there's not one that quite matches, but we can make this one work. We can convert the character to a string just by invoking the two string method. So we're gonna use this overload. I clicked on it to jump down there. They'll give you an example here. See how they have a pattern and a sentence don't worry about this, this is more complicated. I'm not trying to scare you in the eight Caillou series, okay? I'm just, you don't need to grasp all this. It's just putting it in front of you. You're gonna absorb some percentage of it and over time you're going to absorb more of it. Anyways, um, we will call it like this, rejects matches with our str and then our letter and it's gonna give us this collection. That's the idea here. And so important to note is that our method returns a, something called a match collection. So if you click on that, you can just kind of think of this for now as just some kind of generic um, generalized collection, right? Um, like an array or a list, it's got different properties, of course, but um, I just want you to think it's just a group of elements. And so if you look at its properties, you'll notice it has this count field, just like a list does in other C-sharp collections. Uh, unfortunately, some of the times they're called length, sometimes they're called count. In this case, I just wanna show you that it's called count. So the idea is, is that we get this match collection back. If we just invoke this count property, it'll tell us how many times we hit. So let's try something like that here. What if we had return rejects? There was actually one other thing I wanted to show you about regular expressions. Let me go back in order to use regular expressions. If you go to the very top of your document page, it'll tell you what you need to bring in. So we need to bring in system text regular expressions. Otherwise we're gonna get an error. And if you don't believe me, maybe I'll just won't include it and we'll see what happens. Now remember with matches, we gave it an input string, a string to search through, that's str in our case. And then our second argument is what you wanna find. And typically you'll give it a pattern uh, based on these, you know, they, they, they're they cryptic looking when you first learn them, but uh, stay with me. You'll give it some kind of pattern that you want to find in the string. In our case, we just want a single letter. It's really easy, right? This won't quite work, as we'll see, but remember, matches returns a match collection, and match collection has a count property, which will give us the integer value uh, that we're looking for. So we're going to get some errors here. I just want to make a couple points to you. The name rejects does not exist in the current context. That's what I was trying to tell you before. We've got to bring in that library. Otherwise, you have to define your own class, right? That's kind of what it's telling you here, that it can't. Do you see anything else on my screen that defines this? No. So we have to bring it in if we're going to use the one that Microsoft made for us. So let's say system. 
Uh, it was text and regular expressions. And when we do this, this error should go away. I still have another problem, but um, it'll say an object reference is required for the non-static field method or property. Um, so this is a cryptic error that you know you might not understand when you first read it, but I guess the one clue here is look at what they did here, string int. I remember char, you can think of like an integral type, right? They're based on ASCII table values. They're, each character is represented by some kind of numeric value, some kind of code. And so we, we were using an overload that was string and string, right? So that's kind of your clue. So what I'm gonna do is to make sure we're using it properly here, I'm just gonna make the letter into a string. And then when I clean this up, this will probably be okay. Green. Green, good. So here, here's another way. A lot of people like these one-line solutions. You can keep with this if you like it. I'm gonna show you one final way using LINK. Language Integrated Query is what LINK stands for. So let's let's get to that. How about if I go, um, we're gonna use count, C-sharp, enumerable, count, something like that. I'm just trying to get us here. I want to, I tell beginners, actually everybody in the channel, keep this, keep a tab open with enumerable in it where you can expand and just have its methods like I have here. And you can kind of scroll through these until you really memorize them. Keep it open so you can see what's at your disposal. And notice um, we have this count method. This is the one I'm taking you to. Returns another, the number of elements in a sequence. Okay, that doesn't sound quite right, right? This sounds like it would count everything. And if you're thinking that, you're right. But go to the overloads, right? Notice this one. Okay, returns a number that represents how many elements in the specified sequence satisfy a condition, meaning we don't have to count just any, we don't have to count every element. We only count the ones that we're interested in. And so this absolutely works for us. So I clicked on that overload. It takes us down here. It will return that number. We want an integer, that's what we have to return. And if you wanna look at some examples here, you could do this. Uh, they have pets count, and you're gonna use a lambda expression. That's why I told you this is a little more involved. I don't expect you to know this as a beginner, but I think the exposure is good, and that's why I'm doing it. So basically what it is, is this is just a kind of a shorthand for how to define a, a method right in place. So you don't, you could type a, a new method out, but this is just a way for people who code a lot to just have a shortened, a condensed syntax that we can do instead of like, oh, I gotta type out a whole method, you know, just to do this one dumb little thing. Uh, you could think of it like that, I guess. But we're gonna use count this way where we tell it the items to count specifically. We only wanna count the matches. So let's do something like this to, for our link solution. I will replace this. So I will say string count, and I'm going to sort of define a method in place here. When I work with strings, uh, I like to refer to my variables as ch for character because strings are collections of characters. That's what each element is. So I just call them ch, that's just a common thing I do. Uh, so for each character, when do we wanna count them? Well, we wanna count them when char equals letter, right? And so count should return the value we want. We don't need regular expressions anymore. Let's try this. We hit green and I'll hit attempt. And good, more green. So there you have it. You could think of it like I showed you three ways or four if you count a difference between the for loop and the for each loop. But that should be a lot of good information to get you started and at 8 Caillou, hopefully I, I pushed you a little bit too into some newer ideas that maybe you can uh, look into. My OCD's kicking in, so I'm going to fix my indentation level there. I'll go ahead and submit this one. Uh, no need to go back for me. They're gonna make me attempt again because my code was modified, even though it was just formatting. And I'll submit, collect those points that you worked for, you earned it. Don't feel bad if you didn't get it either. That's, you know, in the 8 Caillou, you may not know much yet, so that's okay. It is in your best interest, though, to try these out on your own. So we had a lot of people who use string count, just like I did. Um, 
string count. There you go, just with a for loop, you know. Same kind of thing here. You might find this interesting as another way you can sort of write out your methods. And it's, it's a little more along the lines. Once you understand this, you might understand lambda expressions better. They kind of do that. Um, what else do we have? String split, there you go. Um, anyway, yeah, go ahead and look through these, see what you can do. I figured somebody would use a regular expression, but that's okay. Um, anyways, you know where to find me if you have questions or comments. As usual, I really appreciate the likes and subs. I'll see you in another video.